Hey guys, welcome to Killing Your Family Homestead. Welcome to the weekend. Today is the 10th day after starting incubator number one. Uh, the movie or the video that I did where I finally found my turkey hen who was sitting on a bunch of eggs, um, that was split up after I culled out a bunch of ones that didn't seem viable or they were old, rotten, you know, didn't seem, uh, or excessively dirty, you know, that type of stuff. That, they were culled out and the rest were put in incubator number two. Um, we're not checking incubator number two. I think they're only on day four, something like that, five. This one's on day 10. That is when I candle them for the first time. I'd like you to see us being candling them um, and what we do from a record keeping standpoint. I'm gonna unplug the cradle, not the incubator. Find that cord. It's the top one. Unplug the cradle. This thing's perfectly upright, so that's nice. Take it off. You see my duck eggs there. Okay. Where's my truck? Oh, there it is. Right, it's looking all around. Here is the trusty, dusty. Um, try not to blow the bowl out. Okay. There we go, it's working. We turn the light off now and candle them one at a time. You see I have them all numbered and so the ones that get called out will be recorded. Sorry about the washing machine running, that's probably pretty noisy. Okay, I'm just gonna candle them into this darker corner, not next to the window. And I probably should get a stand so you can see it. Okay, might as well start with egg number one. If I can find the order, there it is. I need to take the duck eggs out first though, so I don't accidentally crack them. They're not to be candled today. Okay. Yep, that one's looking fairly viable. Gotta rearrange egg number two, forgive me. Egg number two. Yep, that one's looking good too. I'm seeing some blood vessels. I don't know if you are. Yep. Egg number three. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. Egg number four. Ooh. Nice. I'm excited about what I'm seeing here so far. Wow. Egg number five is looking good too. Let's take this duck egg out. Yep, egg number one still. Just wanted to, look, wanted to look one more time for comparison purposes. This is egg number 10. That's looking good. Let's go back to the order it was supposed to be in, sorry. Egg number seven. Yep, that's looking good. Set it off to the side here. I got one that's a little stuck in there. Number six is kind of stuck. Wow, egg number eight's looking good too. Egg number six, I'm just going to presume it's okay because it's a little stuck in there. Yeah, oh, can you see those blood vessels in there? I don't know if you can, but that's a, that's a good one too. So far, I was just rocking. I think I looked, already looked at egg number ten, right? Yep. There, put in this egg again. Egg number sixteen. Looking really good. Egg number seventeen, looking great. What I would see is a completely transparent egg. I'm, I, I don't want to see a transparent egg, but I'd like to show you an example of that. That's really what it would look like if I had an infertile egg right now at, at day 10. That's looking good still. That one's looking great. Wow, every single one so far. I might candle a duck egg just for the fun of it. I actually might I might move the duck eggs back to incubator number three because what I thought we were going to do did not happen and I have a little bit of space in there right now, so that's probably what I'll do. Wow, egg number 14 looking good. Egg number 15, a long skinny turkey egg looking good. Egg number 13 is looking good. Wow. Egg number 12 is looking great. Egg number 11, what do you look like, buddy? Fantastic, 100%. Let me just candle on top of, yeah, egg number six looks, oh, I got it out. Egg number six, that looks good too. 
All right, guys. 100%. There's my duck eggs. Let's do that together. It's only been a couple days, so I don't expect to see much. Ooh, ooh, ooh! Look at that! I can see blood vessels. I can see... Oh, that's fantastic. That one is good. Oh, you probably can see that. Look at that one. Fantastic. Don't want to leave them exposed too long. They're very fragile at this stage. This one. Look at those blood vessels. How fantastic. Great, great, great. And the last one, I have all four of these. Look at that. All four of those are fertile. I would expect that from a wild mallard. Okay, I've got the incubator back closed up, making sure it's solid. I'm gonna put those four into that incubator that's across the way. So 100% fertility right here, even 100% on day, what is it? Three or four, I can see in the duck eggs, the mallard duck eggs. The reason why we took the four mallard duck eggs uh, is for two reasons. Number one, the drake and the, and the duck made a nest almost right in front of our front step. So that was going to be a problem. Number two, I had a turkey hen that, that confiscated, that took over the nest. Let me show you that clip right now. Um, just put it in there. No, put it in there too, very carefully. Good job. That was too hard. So you saw there were four duck eggs, but there was a big old turkey egg in there. So obviously the turkey took over the, the nest and the, and, the, and the ducks took off. And then right after that, the turkey lost interest in the nest. So we had to intervene and, and help out. Okay, this is part of the ones that we found, very old eggs. I tried to call out as many as I could, but there might be some in here. I gotta check on them in a few days, candle them for the first time. We shall see what we see. This is incubator number three. I try to stagger the incubation if you watched our last year's videos to make sure that I have baby poults very regularly, kind of like each weekend type of scenario and then you sell them that weekend and it works out pretty well. Um, actually, well, interestingly enough, we bought all three of these, these incubators plus cradles and plus a bunch of food and stuff like that and we paid for it just by selling the poles. So that was kind of sustainable. I've been thinking an awful lot about um, what, what to focus on in this little homestead. We live in a suburb, we live in a rural part of a neighborhood so we're allowed and our neighbors are kind enough to allow us to have these pets, but what do you focus on? Right now we have turkeys and chickens and Katahdin hair sheep and tilapia, um, gardening, composting, it, 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 grapes and other, other you know, juices and honey beekeeping and all kinds of stuff that we got going on. What do you focus on? What do you give up? I'm trying to figure that out. Any ideas, please share with me. Thanks for watching the video. We'll see you next time.